Welcome, everybody, to Global Gospel Conversations. This is episode two. Uh, we did our first one this morning, and we traveled all the way to Qatar. Uh, this evening, we are doing one in Tokyo, Japan. Again, the purpose of this, yeah, we're in Tokyo, guys. Um, we are in Tokyo. So this is exciting. Even when the pandemic um, can't make us there, we don't have to wear face masks. You know, we can just do this. You look uh, more handsome with a face mask, my friend. Yeah, I know. See, that's what a lot of people... And the face mask is actually on upside down. See, Joel <laughs> put his on correctly. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm less than uh, six feet from you guys, so <laughs> <laughs> I may have to wear this. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> well, uh, we're so excited for you guys to join us on Facebook uh, and around the globe. This has been a, a really yes. fun project we've been working on. The goal of this is truly uh, to do a couple of things, is to really make make known what God is doing around the globe, um, which is amazing to experience, but also to encourage one another. Uh, as 1 Peter 5, 9 encourages us, um, as Peter writes to the church, says, resist and firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood around the world. So we are all in this pandemic together, and I'm super excited to be able to have uh, Pastor Ralph and Pastor Joel here with us to dive into these things. So Pastor Ralph, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about yourself, brother. Dan, thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this conversation. It's really a great joy. And I'm so excited to be with you and Pastor Joel. And I'm, I'm so uh, anticipating what, what are we going to be talking about and at the same time, learning from both of you. So just a little background of myself. I was born in the Philippines. I grew up there and I stopped growing up in the Philippines physically. <laughs> and, but you know, something happened to me while I was in the Philippines. I was very young. There was a man who went to our remote place and he shared about Jesus Christ and about his forgiveness, his love, and also the gift of eternal life that we can receive by faith, through faith in Christ. And mm -hmm. I surrendered my life uh, to Jesus Christ uh, and, as my Lord and Savior. And that's a journey that uh, started with him. And in 1995, God, God brought me and my wife to California. In 2006, he brought us here in North Carolina to work with international church planters. Right, uh, There are many nations that God has brought here in North Carolina, and I'm privileged to be working with the Baptist State Convention of North Carolina, uh, representing them in terms of loving on and reaching and supporting and partnering with the international church planters that God has brought here. And I'm, I'm so blessed to have met Pastor Joel a few years ago when I went to Tokyo I I even forget like you know how's the connection that happened. Maybe he can refresh me uh, later. But uh, he hosted me, uh, welcomed me in their home, and let me stay there. One wonderful, wonderful hospitality, and this is a great, great time to be with him again, and a great joy to have this conversation about how the gospel is moving in Tokyo, in Japan. Pastor Joel, would you please uh, share more about? Uh, yourself, your family, and what God's doing in your life. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Thank you so much. Again, thank you, uh, Pastor Dan and Pastor Al for the invite. And I've been looking forward to our time together. Uh, in, in my case, this morning, uh, 8 o'clock uh, here in Tokyo, Japan. And we welcome you to uh, Tokyo, Japan, although you can't see Mount Fuji, it's about <laughs> 60, 70 uh, kilometers away from me right now, and it's kind of cloudy, so I cannot even see it. But uh, it's, a, it's a joy to be with Pastor Dan and Pastor Al. And um, again, um, I'm Joel Quelliar, uh, and I'm originally from the Philippines. Uh, I was born there at the age of 22, uh, moved to Tokyo. That was more than 30 uh, years ago. Now you know my age. And, uh, <laughs> and um, uh, I'm a, a civil engineer by profession, worked for about 10, 12 years 
in a Japanese company. And of course, pri pri prior to that, um, I became a born again believer uh, here in, in Tokyo. And also my wife became a born again believer uh, through the ministry of our church, Tro uh, Tokyo Baptist Church. And uh, Cynthia, that's her name. And she's also from the Philippines. We've been married uh, for 29 years, I believe. Wow. <laughs> I hope uh, wow. I'm right with the wow. number. Hey, congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations, and we will hope she doesn't see this if you're wrong, okay? We, we can we'll try to go back and edit it. Uh, sure, sure. I just forwarded it to her uh, Facebook account. All right. So yeah. I apologize. Uh, yeah, I will probably uh, receive the correction later on at home. Yes. So. <laughs> so praise God. It's all by God's grace. Uh, and we've been blessed with three children. Uh, yeah. And Johanna was our eldest, Timothy our second born son, and Nathan, our third born son. And uh, I've been serving as one of the pastors of Tokyo Baptist Church for almost 18 years now. Wow. For the most part, as a pastor of evangelism slash missions. Mm -hmm. And for the last uh, three years, uh, a role has been added, which is administrative pastor. So... For the last three years, I've been wearing these uh, two hats, pastor of missions, slash evangelism, and pastor of administration here at uh, Tokyo Baptist Church. So that's, in a nutshell, that's uh, who I am, what I do here so in Japan, and it's just yeah. a great blessing to be a part of what God is doing here in, in this part of the world. Yeah, we, uh, Ralph told me that the mountain was going to be in the background. So uh, I don't know if you <laughs> take your camera outside. Uh, and, and <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I need no. to wear my jacket. It's pretty cold outside right now. So. <laughs> really cold. Now, yeah. what, what season is it in Japan right now? Right now, it's still winter time. Okay. Uh, yeah, in a couple of months, we'll enter in spring. And uh, yeah. I don't know what, what it is in, in Fahrenheit. I think we're about six to eight degrees Celsius okay. right now in the morning, 8 a.m. in Tokyo, Japan. Sure, sure, sure. So your seasons are very similar as far as spring, it'll warm up, summer, obviously get hot, then fall. You, you, you get right. kind of the four seasons as well. That's right. Yes, yes. Okay. And that's for people that may not be familiar with Japan yeah. uh, in the context in which that's in. So uh, you know, one of the things that I think that has affected us all, guys, is this the, the COVID-19 virus, and it's reshaped how we do ministry. So, uh, Joel, if you would mind, could you, you know, maybe describe what ministry looked like before this mm -hmm. virus hit, uh, kind of things that you're, you and your church are doing, especially in relation to evangelism, um, you know, kind of show us, give us a glimpse, if you will, of what ministry looked like you know, before this virus hit? Yeah, of course, I could only speak for, you know, for our church and mainly right. with, with the ministry that the Lord has entrusted to me. Um, I would say symbolically or, or allegorically speaking in terms of ministry, uh, we were adding, uh, you know, floors on top of the bottom floors. In mm -hmm. other words, we're building, yeah. you know, and... Uh, and it's an exciting, it was an exciting time for us, actually, uh, as a church, because uh, the Lord allows us to build on one floor on its other, you know, yeah. uh, in, in building this church here in, in Japan. Uh, and at the same time, we were uh, focused so much on weekends, like, you know, we have five services, one on Sunday and four times on Sunday, and children's church, and of course, except for small groups. Uh, we have about, I don't know, 70 to 80 small groups, active small groups uh, that we're meeting, you know, mainly on weekdays and, of course, some Bible studies. So that, that's, that's how it looked like, okay? So you have those small groups on weekdays and some Bible studies and weekends. You come together for large gathering. At the same time, our desire always, the emphasis is reaching people uh, with the gospel. And our online presence is for the purpose of, you know, for those who cannot come. Right. But there's not an intentional, uh, I would say, uh, 
strategy or passion to actually use an online uh, platform for evangelism. And uh, so that's kind of how we were doing uh, ministry as a church. So, so then how, how was um, your location been affected by the virus at this time? I mean, is it, mm -hmm. uh, have you seen a very high number? I think uh, our governor just came out, um, you know, the death rate has rose here. Um, you know, we, we were seeing, oh, we're, we're at the point right now where all time high numbers for throughout the pandemic, oh, which wow. has affected us quite, I mean, a lot. Uh, how is, how has Tokyo been impacted by the virus? Yeah, I think, um, it's, it's probably important this time to give you, a maybe a 30,000 feet, yeah. uh, you know, uh, overview, uh, in terms of Japan population so that, you know. Uh, we can kind of compare. Yeah. Uh, Japan has a total population of 126.5 million people. And, uh, and Tokyo has 14 million people. Oh. So it's like more than 10% oh. of Japan's population is right here in just one prefecture or like a province. Mm. Wow. And then if you okay. add, if you add three, the three surrounding prefectures, like we call them Chiba, Saitama and Kanagawa plus Tokyo, you have 38 million people. Wow. So 30%, 38%, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, 38 million. So that would be like 30% of Japan's population is right here, right now in our surrounding. And um, so uh, overall in Japan, we have, I think, about 350,000 cases of COVID 19. And 5,000, um, sad to say, have passed away due to COVID-19, 5,000 people. And, um, and currently, I think we have about 70,000 cases who are infected. So I would say 280,000 have recovered uh, yeah. from the infection. That's the national stat. For Tokyo, I think we have 90,000 cases and about 800 people died. So out of 14 million, wow. we have 90,000. So it's only like 0.6% of the population. And uh, right now, our uh, current uh, figure for those who have COVID is about 20,000 people. Uh, that's kind of the current status uh, we have here in, um, in, in Tokyo. So, so Joel, if you don't mind me asking, what do you think? Because those numbers, mm -hmm. the, the population numbers are not all that different from uh, the state of North Carolina and our surrounding mm -hmm. area, but the death numbers are so much lower in mm -hmm. Tokyo than it is here. What I know that's an unfair question. You're a pastor, right? <laughs> yes. But, <laughs> what, but, what, but what's what's the ins, insider information? That's right. That's right. You know, me, man. Um, me and Ralph are about to get what's rich. What's the secret? <laughs> We're about to get what's rich. What's the secret? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. You're right. I mean, for example, is there's a nationally, it's a 1.4 percent death rate, right? 350,000 is 5,000, and in Tokyo, uh, we've had uh, 90,000 cases. It's only like 800 who yeah. have passed away. That's like less than one person, right? Like less than one out of one hundred, right? In in your most uh, condensed area, yeah, you have the yeah. least amount of death rate. So that's what, right. What do you think played into that? Um, Besides um, you being there, right? <laughs> <laughs> First and foremost, of course, uh, you know, uh, it's by God's grace and. And of course, at the maybe at the practical level, yeah. here, let me say, you know, people uh, wearing mask here is normal, mm. especially during this time, like wow. even before COVID. You know, wow. wearing mask in Japan is a cultural thing. For example, if you get cold, you yeah. start wearing mask because you're concerned about your neighbor or the person next to you. You mm. don't want wow. them to get it from you. So even wow. COVID-19, we've had that, uh, you know, practice, which is- That's big good. time. That's big yeah, time. That, so it's, it's a given thing. It's wearing masks. That's big time. Yeah. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons why 
uh, the infection rate has been controlled personally. That's how I see it. Yeah. Then second, um, culturally, we don't hug, we don't shake hands. We vow, you know, and... Wow, that's another one. Yeah, another so secret. The, there's no physical touch. And, uh, and, and I would say probably people are aware and conscious about, you know, not to spread the infection. So those are, and, and we have, I would say by God's grace, maybe high quality medical uh, services as well uh, here, in, here in Japan. So, so, you're, so if, if, if I understand it correctly, to get churches on board mm -hmm. um, with, with fighting this virus, was was not a major challenge because culturally you guys are already used to looking out for your neighbor one and then mm -hmm. culturally by not physical touch so mm -hmm. discipling your people to help fight this virus as well has not been a major challenge would you say for us here at tbc it was kind of a major challenge because we are an international church okay so you know from 15 nations although <laughs> 50% of our membership is Japanese, but they have an international mindset. So at Tokyo Baptist Church, we have that international uh, worldview or mindset. Yeah. So it's not a typical, you know, Japanese culture because okay. although we have Japanese 50% and other countries. So we have those intercultural, you know, dynamic relations that we have had, but but people are aware of, you know, that we live in Japan, uh, you know, and we have adapted those uh, cultural practices. So in that sense, it's easier uh, for us to embrace, you know, what the government may tell you and as church leaders, you know, uh, it's, we don't need to overcome a very high, you know, barrier to say, hey, when you come to church, wear masks, let's practice social distancing. So it's, it's, in a sense, it's given. <laughs> that's a little well, different from our context, Ralph. <laughs> yeah, that's that's amazing because uh, you you emphasize the value of communal commitment mm -hmm. to caring and compassionate, uh, uh, you know, just expression in terms of uh, fighting against this virus. It's mm -hmm. not like you know, there's two sides yeah. of the coins, but you know, it's just like one side, one unit, you know, one people fighting it together mm -hmm. and they're doing, you know, what they can do best to protect themselves and to protect one another. That's, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and for, for me here, that is a discipleship issue. That's uh, a huge hump to get our people on board just getting them to wear masks, you know, we require it, we do temperature checks, but is, is a challenge. So what, how have you guys, we know what ministry looked like a little bit before, five services, small mm -hmm. groups. How, how has the virus impacted that? What does ministry look like now? Uh, evangelism, discipleship, how are you guys managing that right now? You know, last year um, when the, you know, when the COVID-19 virus hit us, you know, here in, in, in Japan, uh, initially, uh, sometime in February last year, uh, we uh, canceled all the ministries except for the worship services. And then we, and then we told our people, if you have like cold-like symptoms, you don't need to come. Uh, and children's ministry, uh, you know, they, they switch online so just worship services so i think we were doing that for a month and then march end of march last year we finally said okay let's switch fully uh online and so we uh just went to one service on sunday um, 11 o'clock live streaming and then uh, so that's what uh, we did for about uh, three and a half months so that would be like last weekend of march until mid-july last year so we did that and uh, because during that time um, I think beginning of April for about six weeks the government of Japan declared what we call a state of emergency 
Okay. And uh, it's not um, like a uh, lockdown in the US or in Europe. State of emergency here in Japan, uh, stores, supermarkets are still open and people can still go to work, but the government would uh, strongly request you stay home, work at home, and if possible, uh, if it is not an essential uh, travel or trip, you know, you don't need to do that. So it's more like a request, although mm. the government under state of emer emergency can uh, use public facilities uh, to respond to, uh, to some needs. So we had that for six weeks mm. uh, last year, April and May, and then we waited for another one and a half months before we uh, resume uh, our uh, uh, on-site services uh, mid-July, uh, one service on Saturday, four times on Sunday, only worship services. And then the rest of the ministries remain online. So we were doing that for several months until first weekend of January. And then, uh, but again, when, when we reopen our on-site services, we had limited seating capacity and because of social distancing and our auditorium is not that big. Uh, if it is fully packed, we can sit maybe 320 to 350. But with the social distancing, we could only accommodate maybe 60 up to 70 people. So about 80 to 90 percent of our people uh, worship online even if when we reopen. Oh. And then th we were doing that until the you know first weekend of January and then since two weeks ago, now we're back to fully online because Japanese government uh, declared a second state of emergency last January 7 for one month until February 7. And we communicated to our people, uh, telling them this is a difficult decision for us, your church leaders, but we would like to cooperate with the government in, uh, you know, uh, controlling this yeah. uh, harm. And we believe this is how we can best express our love uh, for uh, other people. So let us uh, cooperate. Let's go back to fully online. So that's what we've been doing for the last two weeks. Did, did you have kickback or when I say kickback, that may be a, a loaded term here. Did you have mm -hmm. resistance? Did people in your church say, whoa, Pastor Joel, we mm -hmm. don't need to shut down. We don't need to support the government. We need mm -hmm. to continue to meet. Did you have a lot of that going on in your church? As far as I know, um, we don't have any, uh, we've had any, we, we, I don't think we've heard anything like that. Yeah, as far as I know. And people probably, you know, there might be some inner struggle, yeah. but, you know, uh, even probably in the leadership level and in some people's hearts, of course, you know, there are those who still prefer on-site worship. Yeah. And uh, when things change, yeah. uh, there are times when, you know, we struggle. But um, I don't remember uh, receiving like a, a letter or an email or message from someone saying, that's not a good decision. So we're thankful wow. for the support and encouragement of our people. Wow, wow, that's amazing, Pastor Joel. Mm -hmm. And my question is, I'm just curious, where do you think this is coming from? Like, it's, it seems like it's easy for you to submit to the authorities and for people, even in your church to cooperate. Uh, where is this coming from? Uh, because again, we live in a context that's totally like different. Sure, sure. Just like yeah. Dan said, uh, you know, if, if you say that, you know, don't do this, uh, there's division because not everyone, you know, will follow that. There will be some who will follow. There's another group who will not, you know, with the area of mass, social distancing. But how come like, you know, in, in Japan, just like as you're describing it, it seems like Yes, it's not 100%, but still, you know, they mm. they submit, they obey, they do it, and they protect one another. Where, where is mm -hmm. it coming from? I think, um, you know, I, I'll talk about 
the church context later on, maybe as a country in general, um, yeah, we have uh, here in Japan to, you know, respect others, uh, which is mm. uh, a big, uh, you know, positive, uh, good value uh, that we have here in Japan is to respect your neighbor. Don't make any annoyance, you know, mm. and uh, don't mind them, you respect them. So, and uh, I think that's where it's coming from. And it's, um, it's part of the training uh, of respecting others. Uh, that's why, uh, and you prefer, you know, it's, you do things for the interest of other people. I think that's a, a, that's a value that's ingrained here in Japan. So it's, it's, mm. it's, uh, it's, it's, wow. It's biblical, right? <laughs> in a sense. Yes, yes. People may not know that. Uh, <laughs> but it's actually sometimes uh, as a believer, wow, he, he acts like more Christian than I, I do. <laughs> right? I mean, uh, there are times when I prefer myself. I mean, like, there are times when I, I, I don't look, you know, for the interests of my neighbors. I, I tend to be selfish. But... Uh, but God can use, you know, any situation, or any person to, to speak to me and to remind me, hey, you know, um, you, you need to be like Jesus and, and of, uh, of setting aside his glory and he became a servant. And, uh, and so, so in the church context, uh, by God's grace, we try to strive to be like Jesus. And, uh, and there's an emphasis uh, in our church uh, through the messages of, of, of you know, of Christ-likeness. Uh, we hear that again and again and again and again, and again you know, in our messages to be like Jesus. You know, it's not about you. It's all about Christ. Let's love one another. And then I would say, uh, again, by God's grace, I believe there is a high level of trust between membership and church leadership. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's been true. built throughout the years because we've been, uh, by God's grace, our uh, mm -hmm. pastoral leadership or church leadership must be stable, and um, we have no, we have had no, you know, transition like every two three years, like most of our pastors have been here like more than ten years or so. So there's the oh, wow. uh, established relationship between um, our people and the church leadership. So, jo Joel, there's there's an element of the culture of Japan that we need here, and the purpose of this is not to make our context better. That's yeah, not why yeah. we're doing this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the purpose, Ralph and I didn't say, "Hey, how can we make our context better?" But yeah. just listening to you, hearing you. It, it not even been discipled from the church forward. It's the culture of Japan has a very biblical view of the other. Now I'm sure there's, there's sinful nature wrapped yeah. intertwined in, into the Japanese culture. Uh, but there's also a major element of, of looking out Philippians to looking out for the interest of others that that is naturally in there that I need here. How do I get that? <laughs> Will you sell me some of that so I can serve that? To, maybe it's in the food. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, wow. in, it's in the in, it's in the food that we eat every morning during our quiet time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's yeah, really that's, good. That's, that's so the best. Good. That's the best. Food, yeah. Man. When I forget to eat that food. Um, Joel is in charge. Christ is not in charge. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That'll preach. I like it. I like yeah, it. That is cool. so cool. And you know, by the way, when I went to Japan a few times, I've experienced extraordinary hospitality and just what Pastor Joel said, they're thinking of others, you know, to help help you in times of need. Yeah. And and I'm just surprised amazed and, and exactly the way you know he was describing it but it mm -hmm. was because like it's a function that they were trained to do mm -hmm. and but pastor joel has brought it into a deeper and higher level when he said that he, and among christians it's not just because they're trained to do it 
but it's because they have a higher purpose in doing it. And that is to glorify God, to obey God, because that's what God said in, in his word. So uh, that's amazing. It seems like the function is the same, but the purpose is different. And, yeah, and I, you know, this is so insightful. It is. Thanks so much for sharing that. The motivation. Yeah. It's for us, it's for the glory of God and the source of power is the grace of God. And yeah, uh, so... And uh, again, you know, this is back in uh, about 10 years ago now, March 11, 2011, uh, when we had the earthquake and tsunami in Northeast yes. Japan. And, yes. you know, about, I would say, 30,000 people um, passed away and wow. buildings have been destroyed, not because of earthquake, because of tsunami. And yeah. And um, as a result of that, by God's grace, Tokyo Baptist Church was able to plant a church uh, in the region of Japan, Northeast Japan. Wow. And then we uh, oversaw that for five years. And after five years, uh, we uh, transitioned it to a, a Japanese pastor. So a Japanese pastor has been uh, uh, yeah, pastoring the church um, since three, four years ago now. Uh, I would say, and at the time, um, I personally witnessed how, you know, the people here in Japan, the Japanese, you know, they work together to help one another, to encourage one another, you know, as a group, as a community. And it's, it's an amazing how uh, the country uh, was rebuilt. On the other hand, for us Christians, it gave us the opportunity to, to be there uh, alongside them. The, uh, we told them, uh, we were open, we're Christians, we have food here, we have the word of God here, and um, if, you are, if you want, we're here to help you, and people embrace that, and uh, it was a beautiful thing, so God can, yeah, yeah can work mightily, wow. even in times of great difficulty. I, mm. I, absolutely, absolutely, mm. wow. Joel, you, you're... One of my hearts behind, one of my heart's desire, I should say, behind this is to remove cultural blinders. I talked a little bit about that earlier. And what you're doing is you're, you're illuminating, you're, you're making known a cultural blinder that those that are maybe more in our context see and experience that we don't know because we've never been to Japan. You're bringing Japan mm -hmm. to us. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and by bringing Japan to us, it's not the, you know, the mountains, the scenery, you're bringing the culture to us, uh, which I've always cherished is learning that culture because we're all made in God's image, mm -hmm. right? And there's reflections in the Japanese culture that mm -hmm. are a reflection of God mm -hmm. that may not be seen and evident in my culture, mm -hmm. which is why it's so powerful to be around one another. So I'm growing as a leader listening to you. As Ralph said, this is insightful. How have you grown throughout this um there's so much we can learn from you brother but how have you grown <laughs> how have you grown and, and developed and how has god moved in you throughout this pandemic well um yeah that's a very uh, good question and I'm, I'm glad you're asking that otherwise i would not ask myself <laughs> so, it, so it helps me to to think and uh about you know the lord's work uh, um, in my life and I believe leaders, and I think this is what uh, I've been learning, uh, leaders are called in times of crisis mm. to make tough and difficult decisions. Mm. Um, so we have been entrusted this responsibility. And for example, within the parameters of what God entrusted me and uh, as a leader. So if I'm not making uh, a tough call or decision, I'm not the leader, you know, in that you know, in that setting. So that's what I've been learning. Uh, that Joel, I put you there. Uh, have faith in me. Trust me. Uh, there are times when, by faith, you need to make a decision. So I, I, that's that's something that uh, what I've been learning. You cannot pass this to your wife. You cannot pass this to to someone else. You know, or someone in your group or church. But you have to make that uh, through prayer and seeking the Lord's will. Sometimes I'm not sure about if this is the uh, best decision, but Lord, uh, I feel like 
you know this is what it takes to make this decision so um, so please lead me and um, also the assurance that my identity is Christ is not in the decision so even if it's a failure at least I've tried yeah. uh, of doing what's best and I, that's something that I've been learning that my identity remains Christ Joel you know I, I'm your heavenly father you're my son just follow to the best of your ability uh, by my grace. And uh, so that's something that I've been learning. It's, it's a process of trusting uh, our Heavenly Father through this process of growing uh, as a leader. And, and also, uh, that's the first one. The second thing I've been learning, you know, as a leader, you know, when you are in a leadership role, uh, especially in a church, it's a very dynamic relationship, right? Because it's an organism, church as an organism. So I relate vertically, I relate horizontally. Vertically in terms of you have, you have supervisor, I have a supervisor, and you have people that you work with horizontally. And, um, and um, in that you know, relationship of relating to one another you know, horizontally and vertically, I've been learning that open communication is so important to maintaining uh, a unity. So uh, to now I've been learning to be more intentional in communicating openly and so that uh, a unity can be built uh, for the sake of the organization, in our case, church. So that's, that's, these are some uh, practical things that uh, I've been learning well, as a leader through, through this uh, you know, pandemic, yeah. I can tell you this, Joel, uh, just talking with you now, the Lord has certainly anointed you, brother. Um, you are a man of wisdom. I had a professor tell me, we can only make decisions based on the information we have. And, uh, you know, we, we fuss over decisions. We lose sleep over decisions, don't we, as mm -hmm. leaders? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It bothers us. And, <laughs> and every day we read out of a book of people that made awful decisions, yeah. horrible decisions, Six. Yeah. Six books of bad decisions, and yet God's <laughs> sovereignty and grace met them there. But mm -hmm. I'm with you. It, it is it, it is one of the most challenging things of being a leader is making decisions mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. hoping and praying that God, <laughs> this is the right one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, know, yeah, perfect. yeah, and and you know something that was connected with what you shared a while ago that you have the discipline of feeding yourself from the word of God and acknowledging him, his sovereignty over your life. The very first thing that you do when you wake up in the morning and you let him feed you with his word and, and his word, his grace, his sovereignty, uh, this being displayed, you know, as you go to your work and minister it's coming out in a form of responsibility, accountability, relationship, building that's genuine and authentic. And that, you know, that's amazing because it's so aligned to who God is. And just like you said, knowing your identity in him and then living that out naturally. So it seems like you know, as I listened to you a while ago, there's, it's not a, a duty that, you know, you need to do it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a delight. It's a delight, mm -hmm. like as you mm -hmm. live your life, as you do your job and fulfill your ministry, this character, like the fruit of the Holy, Holy Spirit is just overflowing naturally. Mm -hmm. And again, we talk about for the glory of God mm -hmm. and because we have a higher purpose. Thanks so much, Amen. Pastor Joel. This is like Amen. wisdom in action, yeah. right? Just yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hallelujah. Joel, last last thing, and then we'll mm -hmm. uh, let you go about your day. It is now, what is it, 8.55 in Tokyo, right? I think so, yeah. <laughs> so we sure, get, this, yeah. We get to see the clock behind you. So, oh, uh, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Thank you uh, for noticing that. That's how I got that. So uh, last thing for those watching uh, in specifically for Dan and Ralph, because we need to hear it. What advice do you give to leaders all around the globe that's dealing with this pandemic uh, in an effort to still uh, mm. push forth the gospel message, making disciples, not letting the pandemic stop us? What message do you have 
uh, mm. for us. Well, again, thank you. But well, before we end, uh, just want to make sure I want to thank you for this opportunity, uh, just to be able to uh, have time with you, Pastor Dan and Pastor Olaf. And uh, I'm just thankful that the Lord is connecting us globally now, and distance is no longer an issue. And uh, all over the world, we can be, you know, we can have this time anytime, anywhere. I and, agree. And the problem yeah. is we can't just eat sushi with you. So but that's right. You know, yeah. We got everything here. So, so let, let's let's <laughs> let's pray that there will be a technology that a smell or a, maybe a taste can be sent. <laughs> Ooh, it's for coming. example, I'm maybe I'm eating coming, sushi brother. and and drinking miso soup. Mm. <laughs> then while enjoying that or you're enjoying your barbecue there or steak, <laughs> maybe I can smell it. <laughs> yeah. And there's a smoke coming from our yeah, laptop. Maybe smoke, maybe and... additional app, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. coming up from my computer device. We, we should develop it. We maybe. should develop it. Uh, maybe yeah. it's calling us to develop. It's about time. About time. <laughs> it's about time. So the, the global community is listening, whether it's an IT or maybe computer science, maybe start <laughs> developing that. I app. agree. I agree. Yeah, you know, and Pastor Ralph has the uh, patent right and all the... Yeah, yeah. we'll do it, brother. Yeah. <laughs> and 50% so for Pastor Dan as well. That's so. right. <laughs> no, no, no. 51%. 51%. 51 okay. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, again, just want to express my uh, gratitude to both of you and, of course, to the Lord. I enjoy uh, fellowshipping me with my brothers in Christ when we talk about the gospel, when we talk about his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, we can look forward to his coming, right? I mean, it's, uh, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. our relationship does not end here. And like today, it's my first time to meet and talk with Pastor Dan. And mm -hmm. it's amazing how we can uh, enjoy each other, the conversation. And, uh, and this will be for eternity. That's, and, right. and that's exciting. And that's what we want to communicate to people. I mean, our life is not just about here, and it's it's it, it, this is a rehearsal for what will be coming uh, in the future when we, we when we will be with the Lord for eternity. It's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. You know, it's it's going to be the land of no more, no pain, no problems, no pandemic, no COVID, no mask, no social yeah. distancing. You know, and um, so we will love with one another. So. Uh, so if you're listening and you're not yet a born again believer, you know, remember Jesus loves you, He cares for you, and mm -hmm. He has a wonderful plan for you. All you need mm -hmm. to do is to repent and and ask Him into your life, and He will yeah. save you. He died for you. He's alive. He'll mm -hmm. give you life. It's it's going to be an amazing and wonderful life. And for my fellow, uh, you know, uh, believers uh, or leaders, so to speak. And uh, let me leave you with Hebrews 13, 5, the second part. This is a famous verse. Uh, uh, there's a promise in Hebrews uh, chapter 13, verse 5 that says, I will never leave you or abandon you. Hmm. And um, this hmm. verse has been encouraging me. You Thank know, you. Uh, both of you are theologians and pastors. And uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Based on my understanding, you know, the word never uh, in this verse is not an ordinary never. Mm -hmm. uh, based on my uh, reading mm -hmm. in Greek, it's mm -hmm. a combination of two words. O means no not and me means no not. So no, not, if you no. actually combine those two words, you never have a not. strong empathic negation. Mm -hmm. So the amplified version for this verse is, I like it. I will never, God says, I will never, no, not never. Never, never, never leave you. Never, never forget you. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it has wow. been all along like that. The Lord will never leave you, will never forsake you. Thank you, Lord. And he will Thank be faithful. You, so we may be experiencing COVID-19 pandemic mm -hmm. now or fatigue, I would say, ministry fatigue. Just remember, mm. the Lord is with you and is for you. And uh, sometimes there is this temptation of, oh, 2019 is better than 2020. 2019 is better than maybe even 2021. Mm. That, there is a temptation of going back to the past. But let's not go back to the past. It's like the Egyptians, it's like the Israelites. Wow, this mm. manna, 
this wilderness, yeah. I don't like it. Egypt is better. The food there is better. The environment there is better. But the presence of God is what they're missing. So right here, right now, it's the presence of the Lord who is with you and with me. And he is right here, right now, with all of us doing his work. We are where we are right now because God wants us to be where we are right now because he's changing us, transforming us for a greater purpose for his glory. Because his word is true, he's coming, and his kingdom will be preached to all the world, mm -hmm. and he will come. So let's mm -hmm. join our hearts together and hands. Yes. And I'm so thankful that the global community of believers is coming together to pray and to share the gospel for yes. the glory of Christ. Yes. So I'm just so thankful. Thank you yes. so much. Well, I'm excited and wow. thankful that there are people that have never met you like myself that are now going to get the platform to hear your heart, brother, and to hear what God has done in you and through you. There are people that had no idea what was happening in Tokyo, Japan, but not only are they knowing what's happening in Tokyo, Japan, but they also now um, get ministered to by you. Truthfully, I have been ministered to. You have ministered to me. You have uh, encouraged me and, and uh, certainly exhorted me as well. I certainly appreciate that. Um, would you mind just taking a, a moment here and just praying for those leaders that are around? You know, we don't know what decisions they're facing right now and, and the stress that they're under. Um, boy, I pray they heed your words. I really do. In your heart, even more importantly, uh, that uh, as God has ministered to you, that they would they would desire to have some of that, that, that they have access to too. So would you mind praying sure. yeah. just for our leaders that. all over the globe that are watching? Yes, sir. Yep. Oh, Lord, thank you so much for uh, my brothers here and friends in Christ, Pastor Dan, Pastor Ralph. Uh, I've enjoyed uh, this precious time of fellowship with them and with your presence. Lord, uh, we're like thousands of miles uh, away from each other, but yet, thank you that in Christ we can be united. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. And uh, thank you, God, how thank you me. have saved us Thank you for the how you have given us life in Christ. Yes, and thank, thank you, you for, Jesus. by grace, calling us to be a part of your kingdom. Thank and, you. uh, and just this opportunity to serve you, uh, Lord, in different parts of the world. I pray for anyone who might be listening, Lord, who might be discouraged or disappointed because of um, the different circumstances in life uh, related maybe to pandemic or it could be a relationship issue or work issue, financial issue. Mm -hmm. I just pray, Lord, that you would encourage uh, this person and knowing that you are um, yes. with them and nothing can yes, separate right. them from the love of Christ, which is, you know, from the love Thank of God, you, which is in Christ Jesus. Thank you. And God. I just ask that you would just, uh, Lord, uh, through your Holy Spirit and with your word, that you would strengthen uh, my fellow believers, leaders you, uh, in Jesus. Christ to accomplish your purpose in different parts of the world. We pray, God, for a spiritual revival and awakening and transformation Thank all over you, the Jesus. world. In our case here in Tokyo, still, Lord, 99% of the people here in Tokyo, in Japan, do not know you and have no personal yes. relationship in Christ. We pray, yes. God that you might be gracious to us and bless mm. us and yes, make man. your face shine upon us so that your thank name you, will Father. be known. Heavenly thank Father, you. thank you for your grace. Thank In you. Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Wow. This was simply amazing, guys. I pray for those of you that watch this, uh, you too were blessed by this. This will be made available to rewatch again. So it's not just on live stream. Uh, we ask to share this um, with your, with, with people, you know, maybe a leader that you have, maybe your pastor that uh, he can be encouraged during this time. So thank you, Ralph. Um, thank you, Dan. Thank you, Pastor Joel. No, thank you, thank you so, so much. much. It's thank a great so blessing much. to be with you. This Amen. is truly, truly a huge blessing, Joel. And I think anybody that spends the time listening is going to be enormously blessed. So thank you, Facebook, for being a part. We'll look forward to seeing you next time on Global Gospel Conversation uh, as we'll be touring the world and hearing what God is doing. Yeah. And we'll look forward yeah, to seeing and, you. Thank and then you. in the next coming days, we'll have 
uh, friends from Italy, from London, yeah. from Cambodia that we will be spending time with and also listening to their stories just like yeah. this yeah. In, on what God is doing. And yeah. of course, we can't wait to go to Tokyo and do this there, uh, this conversation in Tokyo in front of a sushi and sashimi. Woo! So good, man. <laughs> yes. Yes. Love you. Love Let's you, Pastor Joel. Love you, Dad. Same here. 